hello, I'm Cody Sandall, one of the pastors of First Presbyterian Church of Bethlehem. We are continuing a series on training small group leaders. This is the third part of the series. Today we'll be talking about how to have good discussions. And I think it's an important point to remember that you are aiming to have good discussions, not good lectures. The goal as a small group leader, as a facilitator of a discussion, is to get other people to talk, not for you to talk. If you are speaking the most of everyone else in your group, if you're the one who has spoken more times than not, then you haven't done your job. You haven't achieved your goal as a small group leader. You want to lead a discussion, not a lecture. You want everyone else to be talking. And remember, we, we talked about how to know when something is worthwhile or when it's a rabbit trail you need to head off is when you're having spiritual discussions about things that matter to you and to your small group. If that's happening, if you're having spiritual discussions about things that matter to you and to your small group, it's going well. Run with it. Keep it moving. And one of the, the keys to keeping a discussion moving is to remember that it's it's more fun, it's more engaging to discover something on your own rather than be told something. I mean, would you rather someone tell you what to do with your life or would you rather figure out your own way? Would you rather, you know, read about something or discover it and learn it on your own? This is the same principle behind having labs in a biology class that you get to be hands-on or in a chemistry class. You get to do something and discover it, not just read about it. In a textbook and in a small group it's the same thing you want to help people discover whatever truth you have found through whatever text you're studying if, if God has impressed something that matters to you you want to help people discover that same truth or discover something else that matters to them not just tell them straight out this is what I think you should do and this is what I think this text means help them discover not just memorize and one way to do this um, this could relieve some pressure if you are, are intimidated, what if, what if my small group asks a really tough question? What if someone in the group says something that's you know, kind of way out of left field, it's, it's weird? What if, what if someone uh, says something that's a teaching moment, I want to jump in and, and tell them what I've learned? How do you handle those things? Well, the same principle can be applied to all of those scenarios. So you get a tough question. For instance, um, why don't I always get what I pray for? You have a couple of options on how to respond to something like that. Why don't I get what I what I pray for? Why don't I always get that? You could jump into a theology lesson and start talking about you know the theology of prayer, or, or maybe you could share your experiences and start um, sharing the things that that you have experienced you know, relative to prayer, or you could send it around to the rest of the group. You could ask, well, what do y'all think? Have you prayed for things and, and received what you asked for or not received what you asked for, what do you think about that? So if you get asked a tough question, um, it's usually helpful to, in the discovery process to actually turn it back to the group. Don't be the source of answers when you don't have to be. Let the group share their experiences. That's more likely than not a tough question isn't just, it's not just one person wondering that. Probably the whole group or many people are wondering the same thing. They've wondered the same thing about prayer, and they would like to weigh in. Give them the chance. Turn it back to the group when you get a tough question. If you get if you get a weird statement, like I think I think Jesus was a, a space alien from Alpha Centauri. You know what do you do with that? Um, because you you want to affirm people that they have responded, uh, that they're engaged, they're not asleep. You know this is a good thing. But but what do you do when you get? something weird like that. Well, this there's a principle called self-correction, that, that the group can self-correct against some of those out-of-left-field statements like that. You can, again, turn it back to the group. Well, well, how would y'all respond to that? You know, what do you think? Is Jesus a space alien from Alpha Centauri? You know, turn that back to the group, and uh, more times than not, the group will kind of self-correct. If you need to jump in, then you need to jump in, but let the group take a shot at it first. Uh, what about a teaching moment? Uh, maybe you are you're talking about repentance, and someone says, "I don't think people can ever actually change. I don't think people really change. They are the same tomorrow as they were today, and forever and ever, Amen." And so that's kind of your your entry point. You want to tell your story. Well, that can be good, um, 
but it's also an opportunity to let other people jump in and tell their stories. One of the big things that you want to do is to, is to have people talking about their experiences, uh, not just talking about ideas. And you don't just want to be sharing your stories, but remember, you shouldn't be the one talking most of the time. You want other people sharing their experiences. You could, you could ask of the group, has anyone here tried to change anything about their life? You know, did it work? Did it not? And then you can bring in your story if someone doesn't hit something similar. Give the group an opportunity to make the point that you wanted to make from your own life. So if it's a tough question, if it's a, if it's a weird statement, if it's a teaching moment, give the group a chance to weigh in before you jump in and close it down. Now, good questions are, there are three things that really mark good questions. Good questions are surprising, they are specific, and they are personal. So once again, good questions are surprising, they are specific, and they are personal. If you're always asking the same questions over and over again, the ones that are, are obvious, um, probably they've heard those questions before, especially, you know, if it's you're dealing with people who've been in the church for a long time. They've probably heard the same old Sunday school questions asked over and over and over again about the same texts. Ask them something that they haven't heard before. Or ask it in a way that they haven't heard before. That's surprising. It, it kind of gets people's attention. It's specific. Um, how can we love more is pretty generic. You know, is there someone in your life that you can do one thing this week to show them that you love them? That's a little more specific. Um, so the more specific the better. Creativity thrives when there are boundaries that can be broken, rather than just being able to go anywhere you want. So ask something that is specific, that leads them in some direction, but let them go in a direction that is spiritual and, and meaningful. And finally, personal. Um, more people than not are going to want to know your stories. They're going to want to know other people's stories and experiences. Sometimes they want to know that they're not alone that others have had that experience too. So asking a personal question, but not getting too personal for your group and their comfort level, allows people to share what they've experienced. And that is what people will remember. That's what they want to talk about. It's what they want to share. It's what they want to hear. More times than not, people want to talk about experiences more than ideas. Ideas are good too. It supplement experiences with ideas and and with that kind of stuff. So you want surprising, specific, and personal. I have a few examples here. Um, if you won the lottery, what would you do with the money? You know, that's not a kind of question you expect to hear in a small group. It's a good warm-up question. Uh, it's it's very specific, and it's personal. What would you do with the money? So that that's a good question. What If, if you could know one thing with 100% certainty, what would it be and why? Again, surprising, specific, personal. Uh, what does it mean to disadvantage yourself for the week? We don't normally think about disadvantaging ourselves. That's, that's su surprising. It's specific because it's disadvantaging yourself for the week, and it's personal. What would you do? Or who owns your money, your time, your possessions? We don't think about someone else, you know, just you know, think about God owning what is ours. So that's surprising. It's specific. It's personal. Those are the marks of good questions. Um, one of the other things to, to keep in mind as you're asking questions is where's the energy flow in your group? Uh, what, what's people's engagement level? People go through different stages um, in a group. One thing to keep in mind is that more often than not, um, earlier equals more engaged. Uh, that doesn't always work. You can have groups that, that build over time, that get stronger over time, uh, but most people, they're going to have more energy for engagement earlier rather than later. But you also need to help them get warmed up to help them have an entry point. So there are um, having a, a warm-up question, which is a question that anyone can answer. The, the lottery question or the, or the what would you want to know, those are good warm-up questions because it's something that everyone has an experience with. Everyone has had an experience of spending money, um, and everyone has had an experience of wanting to know something. So build on something that everyone can answer, not too deep, but has an entry point into the lesson. That's a good warm-up question to get them rolling. 
from there moving into discussion questions. That's you know the meat of things. And remember, the earlier you get to something important, the more energy you'll have available. These questions should be more open-ended. If it can be answered with a yes or no, um, especially if you're working with you know middle school, high school groups, you're going to get a yes, no. Ask a question that can't be answered in in one syllable. Make it you know if it's experience-based that helps. Um, ask about facts and feelings. A lot of times you know when we're telling a story about ourselves, we'll tell what happened, but not what we were feeling while it was going on. So so you can you can dig deeper. If someone tells you a story and it's all facts, you can ask, well, what were you feeling when that happened, or or what was the other person feeling? What was your friend feeling? Where what was your friend doing during this situation? You can dig deeper. That's uh, a a good thing to do. And when it, when anyone ever shares something, be sure you affirm it. Uh, you don't want to shut someone down, even if it's one of those weird statements. You know, Jesus is an alien from Alpha Centauri. Affirm that they were still listening, um, even if you want to, if you think that they're way out in the left field. So affirm them. So to give some examples, um, this would be kind of a, a bad example. How does Jesus show anger in this passage? That's a not a great question because it, is, it puts a label already on Jesus' emotion that he is angry. Instead, you could ask, what is Jesus feeling? Let them put a, a word on it. And what does he do with his feelings? So you're, you're pointing them to, you're, you're putting a boundary on it, an idea, a direction, but not putting a label on it that prevents further discussion. So better to ask something a little more open-ended, what is Jesus feeling, than, than how is, or why is Jesus angry? So that's kind of an example of a discussion question. Finally, when you're closing, you want to get something that's a specific application. Um, and that's where the, the specific part of the of the surprising specific and personal really comes in uh, handy. I already mentioned you know, how can we love people more. Um, whereas you can you can also kind of give people an idea of of possibilities. You know, if you you could ask them if you were to spend five minutes uh, talking just talking to your mom, you know, every day this week, would that show her that you love her? And then how can you show love to someone in your life? So, you, know, you can kind of prime the pump. A little bit, and uh, and get it a little bit more specific. Doug Fields talks about this and says we're trying to connect beliefs with actions. So if you've covered this idea, we want to love people more. How do you put that into an action? So put those two integrated together, collecting connecting beliefs with actions. A couple of just practical tips as you're doing this. If let's say you're having a small group and your and your group just isn't talking. Uh, one of the ways you can get them talking is to use a go-around. That instead of just asking a question and letting someone chime in, that you literally, we're going to start with you, we're going to go around the circle, and everyone's going to answer. Uh, the, the caution here, all of these tips are, are precision instruments. They're not, you know, a huge shovel. They're more like a scalpel. Um, you can use a go-around maybe once or twice total in any small group setting. If you use it more than that, people are going to shut down and feel like you're forcing things. So you can use it once early maybe to get people into talking mode. Uh, maybe that's your warm-up question. You can use it again later on if you need to, to kick things going. But a go-around is a good way to get people engaged. If one particular person is silent, beware calling them out. But you can invite them to participate. Now those are very different things. Can you phrase if you want to get something out of a particular person, can you phrase it in such a way that it's an invitation to share? You're asking them to help you by sharing something that you think is important. You know, it, it looks like you're you're thinking right now, and I'd, I'd love to know what you're thinking. You know, I think you've got something to, to share. Um, I'd love to know what's going on, and I'd love to know your response. Phrase it positively rather than you know, you haven't said anything, you know, give us something, come on. That's not going to be as effective as if you invite them to share. And again, you can only do this one or two times total, one or two people ever in the group uh, for that session before, again, people will shut down and won't talk unless you call on them and they'll resent the fact that you called on them. Um, I talked a little bit about digging deeper, but there are a couple of, of ideas. The, the best thing to keep in mind is don't let the group get away with the first answer. If you're leading a small group and you've got an answer in your mind and someone gives that, the temptation is to go, that's great, let's run with that and move on. 
Well, what about everyone else who may have had a different answer than you thought of? Or has a different point of view? Don't let a group just say one answer to your question and then move on. Stay there. Ask if there are other responses. Um, again, if someone tells a story, ask, you know, how did they, how did you feel when that happened? How did someone else feel when it happened? How did someone else react to it? So if someone tells a story, ask questions about their story. If someone gives an answer, ask for more answers. Don't settle for the first one. Those are some some tricks to to digging deeper. Um, and again, just this is just a good reminder. If you're judging on whether something is a rabbit trail or something to go with, it's a spiritual conversation about something that matters to you in the group. If it's not a spiritual conversation, if it's not something that matters to you, if it's not something that matters to the group, if any of those are true, head it off, move on to something different. But how do you do that? Um, if you're not the kind of person that likes to interrupt people, you are going to get people who will just keep talking and talking and talking. One of the ways that I do this is called staying in the conversation. And that's where if someone's talking and I'll say, yeah, mm-hmm. So, so what you're saying is, and then I'll summarize what they've said and then let them continue. As you do those, those yeahs, those uh-huhs, and those summaries, you are providing opportunities and entry points for you to actually cut them off and move in a different direction. Um, if you're comfortable interrupting people, you can just jump in and, uh, and try to head it off. You'll have to figure out your own style on this. Um, I try to make a little joke about, you know, we're off track or, or try to bring us back and, try to do it in a humorous way, that's a little bit more my style, and I use those entry points to summarize, and without pausing, because if you pause in your summary, um, they'll jump back in, you summarize and then move into a question to someone else, or move in a different direction. Staying in the conversation allows you to redirect without it feeling as awkward. So those are just some, some tips and some ideas on having good conversations, good discussions in your group. Remember, you want to be, uh, you don't want to be the one talking the most. You want other people to be talking, to be having these discussions. That's your goal. That you want to help people discover the truth for themselves rather than having them memorize what you have learned. Have that discovery. If, if, you, if you get a tough question or a weird statement or even a teaching moment, let the group respond to it before you jump in. And maybe you won't even have to jump in. And then good questions are surprising. They are specific and they are personal. You want to be talking about and have others talking about their experiences, not just their knowledge. So again, I'm Cody Sandal, pastor for discipleship of First Presbyterian Church, and this is our series on being a small group leader.